Alex, you're on Cape Side Press. I'm with Tuco Tocos, who's coming off a Fury FC title win. Tuco, how are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. As you can see, not a scratch on me as usual. Little mark, I guess. Couple marks, but other than that, I'm all good, man. You look good, bro. You look good. The fucking beard's nice and healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome bro well it's been four days since your fight how you feeling feeling good bro like i said not a scratch on me a couple bumps and bruises on the shins i must have been throwing some kicks i can't remember but uh good man feeling great bro as you can imagine yeah i know for sure man um how how uh how did you feel about your performance Bro, to, if I'm completely honest with you, Al, like, I actually felt like shit. Like, after the weigh-ins, day of the fight, I don't know if it was a combination of being a bit burnt out and overtrained from the long training camp. As you, as we spoke before, I had he pulled out a bunch of times, so I ended up fighting almost six weeks later than originally scheduled for, but I never took my foot off the gas. I never stopped training, so I was a little overtrained a little bit drained and then with the weigh-in um I don't know on fight day I just woke up I felt a bit weak tired and when I left for the arena I, was, I like felt my head I was like damn I think I'm coming down with the fever um and then when I wa warmed up for the fight I kind of got that sinister sweat like that you get when you're sick that kind of cold sweat and I was like oh damn I really don't want to fight five rounds <laughs> yeah so then uh but whatever, I'm still game. I just pushed it to the back of my mind, went out there and uh, came to finish like I always do. Uh, I got him down somehow and was on his back. And that was, I was like, yes, thank you. Hopefully I can just submit him and be done with it. But then when he got up, like I, I did feel kind of fought. Like I felt tired. My arms were heavy. I was like, oh, damn, this is about to be a five rounder. Um, and uh, and then I just loaded up on that last combination and caught him clean. Yeah, so you you posted a clip of um, that you've been practicing that combo for fucking yeah, seven, like seven hundred years now. Um, yeah, I mean, how months cool, and months. How cool is it that it landed? It was so good, and you know what? I've actually got another video. I'm going to send it to you where. We're, we're standing there for a minute and I, my, my cornerman, Andre Fialio, he's in the UFC. He fights in two weeks on uh, April 16th against Miguel Baeza in uh, Vegas. I'll be there. Um, little plug. Yeah, he, you actually hear him in the clip. He says, left hook after that right hand seconds before I throw it. And in that moment, uh, we were just in the, I, I just didn't throw anything. I was just looking. He had his hand on his face. And I said to myself, Oh, as soon as he moves, I'm going to throw that two, three with everything I got. And uh, he just put, I thought it was a jab, but he just put his hand out to touch my hand. And uh, and I just let it go, bam, bam. My feet almost came off the floor when I threw that left hook. I swear, it had my entire body weight behind it. Bam, and uh, the rest is history. Awesome, man. Um, how happy are you to be done with this guy? Like, no more Ty Flores. Um... I'm happy, man. I'm happy that I got to put my stamp on him as well because he was on a bit of a run. He, he won seven out of his last eight. And the only loss was on the contender series to Dustin Jacoby, who couldn't finish him, who's in the UFC, who's a striker, couldn't finish. So I guess that's some kind of testament to my power that uh, I dropped him and then knocked him out. Know? Right, yeah. No, for sure, for sure, man. Um, so, what's next, man? Uh, did did you get a chance to uh, talk with uh, Mick after the fight? So yeah, on the mic, I had some words for Mick, and uh, he was like looking at me, smiling, nodding, giving me the thumbs up. And then uh, I got a bunch of calls after the fight, like asking me some questions and stuff like that. And then uh, I worked with Ali at Dominance and he, he just kind of, he texted me, asked me a few questions and he said, I spoke to Mick. He was like, now we wait kind of thing. So I don't know, it's looking good. As soon as I got to the gym, all of my teammates in the UFC were like, you don't fight again until you're in the UFC. Like, they were like, don't even think about fighting. Now you just wait. It's going to be summer, or maybe after summer or maybe short notice before then. But guys like Gilbert Burns, he said to me, bro, you, you just wait now. So I was like, oh, I guess that's what I do. Sounds good. Awesome. So, I guess, so it sounds just like it's a like it's a waiting game for you. Um, yeah. I mean, so I mean, I think it's pretty obviously that obviously that 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 you're gonna get a UFC call. 
for your for your debut, like, do you want a eight week camp or do you want a short notice fight? Because I know you kind of like those, you kind of don't like those. Like, what's yeah. what's a perfect? To be honest, I'm at a spot right now, Al, where like my weight is good because I just had so much time to prepare. And I'm thank God my body's good again. Two fights in a row, two first round finishes, or I didn't take any damage, just a few superficial bumps and bruises on the legs and stuff and uh, hands. But I'm so blessed that I don't have any long standing injuries from the fights. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to get back in the gym on Monday. You know, my corner and my coaches forced me to just take a week out. They're like, bro, you've been training all year, haven't missed a day. I'm talking like two runs on a Sunday. Like I haven't taken a, one session off. Um, so they're like, take a week. Just take a week where you don't do anything. But I'm already getting the itch to like, I want to go lift. I want to go for a run, you know. Uh, I want to just stay in shape and, and get back to training, man. So maybe wait until the UFC goes back to Europe later this year and... I uh, no, I, I'm not bothered. The, the, the thing about me is I already have my green card. I don't know any of these visa issues. I'm based in the United States. And I, I, I mean, I don't know, like for their European fighters, like the British guys, especially, I don't think they have any guys based in the States. UFC, so that, that works in my favor. I'm ready to go. Like I have the right management. I'm at a top gym. I don't need to make any changes or decisions in that sense. So I'm ready to go, you know, whenever they're ready, I'll be ready to jump in there. I'm going to keep my weight good so that, I, can't, I could take a short notice fight on a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, man, me, I'm a guy, I'm super realistic. Al. I don't, I'm not one of these guys who's like, oh, I'm going to be a UFC champion. Like, it's so cringe to me. I just love to get in there and, and mix it up, you know, and go out there swanging and banging like I do and go for finishes. And that's it. I'll just, I'll just be happy to be there and, and fight, you know, and I'd be coming to finish. I mean, you have to go to the UFC Apex by cornering your uh, cornering your your teammates for all all year long. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. yeah, makes sense for you to fight there, you know. Yeah, that helps as well. I mean, if someone pulled out on a fight week, I mean, I'm there like twice a month, so <laughs> <laughs> they save on flights and hotel and coaches and everything. So yeah, no, for sure, man. That's I, also I, an option. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's that's awesome. Um, it's awesome. Well, I guess no more. <laughs> It's just a waiting game. It's just a waiting game, like you said. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going to do now, wait and wait. I mean, it would have to be some bad luck to to not get called up, I guess, because 205 is so thin. I am finishing, guys, you know. I've finished all my pro wins apart from one. Um, so that's it. I have a high finishing rate against good opposition because there are guys out there with better records uh, that are 12-0, and 0, but it's like when you look on their resume, they're eight and zero fighting zero and zero guys, you know. They haven't really been in uh, real fights, so the I think other, that all works in my favor. Yeah, no, for sure. The other option is a contender series. Do you want to mm. go that route? I'm not mad about contender series, just because you could win and not get signed. You know, it's not the best deal to me. I'd I'd prefer to wait and uh, and actually just get straight in there. You know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Awesome. Well. Um, Finally, I want to ask you about some um, things that have been going on. Uh, the Will, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Uh, oh, yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know, man. I, I, I've analyzed it a little bit. I'm not sure if it is fake. <laughs> um, but to be honest, I think it's all just a distraction anyway. Like the Oscars, they were tanking with their views. So I think they, may, they stirred the pot and kind of staged that maybe just to get the ratings up. But I mean, I don't really care about that. I care about real fights and I care about Burns giving Hamza Chimaev a slap uh, next week. That's yeah. more what I care about. Yeah, man. So your teammate Gilbert Burns going up against Hamza, man, it's a, it's a huge fight for him. It's a, it's a huge fight just in general. How do you see that fight playing out? Damn, I think obviously everyone knows the threat that he poses. Um, the difference is Gilbert's just a different animal in there and where Hamza is strong is also where Gilbert's going to be strong, you know? They have a, the same style. He's not going to be able to just take him down without the biggest scramble that he'll ever encounter in his life. So Gilbert's dangerous everywhere. He's dangerous when, even when he's hurt and he's on the back foot and he's wounded. That's when he's most dangerous because he just throws with reckless abandonment. So 
Gilbert's dangerous the entire fight. Hamzat's only dangerous as, as long as his reputation is intact and he can demand respect at the beginning of the fight. But once Gilbert hits him and that the mystique goes out the window, then it's a real fight and uh, he's going to be in deep water there. He's going to be in our adopted state of Florida with our crowd. And uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be feeling it, I think. I mean, the odds for this fight are disrespectful. Like, get, no. Hamzat's like a minus 500 favorite. Gilbert's like a plus 400. Like, that's, 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 that's it's disrespectful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know what? Interesting story, Alex. I actually trained with Hamza uh, mm-hmm. back in All Stars in Sweden. When I lived in London, I would go to Sweden sometimes for fight camp. And uh, when I went there, Hamza was living under the stairs in the gym. He hadn't fought MMA yet. I think he was waiting on his Swedish passport so that he could represent Sweden in wrestling at the European Championship and like that. That's where he was, but he was still training with all the guys there and he was tossing Latifi and pushing over the damn cage. Like he was a monster then. So he was a monster then, but he had some weaknesses. So Gilbert has a few tricks up his sleeve. So we'll see who's going to be revealed next week. Not wait, I cannot wait for that fight. Did you ever get a chance to wrestle with Hamza w- with your time at, uh, at, at All Stars? I did, yeah. I remember wrestling with him once. I'm sure he doesn't remember me because uh, it was uh, it was one to remember. I remember he kind of fainted. I pulled my leg back and he cartwheeled to my back and then just dumped me. And I was like, holy shit, who is this fucking guy? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Um, another teammate of yours, Brennan Allen's fighting Jacob Malcoon, who's um, yep. kind of on a run. Uh, what, what do you think about that fight? We're all going to be there, and we're, I'm going to head out to Singapore for that. Um, nice. Man, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to sound too big-headed, but it's like where he is strong and has the only chance he could ever possibly beat Brendan is also where Brendan is strongest. And uh I don't think what Jacob doesn't know, but I don't even think the whole MMA community knows. Like, I've trained with the who's who in the sport. I've trained with everyone. And uh, I know he's my boy, but I really do think Brennan is one of the best fighters in the world. And his ground game is so good. Uh, I think it's the best in that whole division, um, especially just for MMA. Like, his pure jiu-jitsu is incredible. And you see that when he rolls with high-level guys who are just jiu-jitsu guys. But when he's in the cage and it's MMA grappling, I don't think there's anyone that can touch him in the world. So I think Jacob could get seriously hurt in that fight. It depends what mood Brendan's in. I mean, he's tiny. He's like 5'9". Brendan's 6'2". And uh, it's just a different level of grappling with Brendan. Yeah, no, man. I'm a, I'm, I'm a big um, believer of uh, Brendan Allen. I've, I've, I thought he's one of yeah. the best. Uh, best fighters in that division for a long time and he's just he's just got some shit luck you know <laughs> yeah i know but you know what it is his own doing and he's going to mature more and more as a fighter because he's still only he just turned 26 so yeah he's so young he so long to go i mean the champ i think is he's 33 maybe it's like when there's an eight year disparity between the champ and him and he's like almost has as many fights as the champ in the ufc he's got eight fights in the ufc and no one's even heard of him yet. So it's so like he still hasn't had his coming out party, um, but he has all the skills. He's been a black belt for three years. Like he, he's just, he has all the attributes. He just needs to mature like mentally and then get in the right spot and the rest will be history. And finally, on Luther is fighting John Howard this this weekend. At yep. XMA. Uh, so I wanted your thoughts on that one. I was trying to be there for that, but I just got back from my fight. I didn't know what, condition I would be in so mm-hmm. I was like I'll wait to book a flight and then when I got back to Florida I checked the flights and they were crazy like 1500 bucks just to go a couple states over I was like should I drive and then there was like no hotels I was like damn uh, I'm not gonna be able to make it but uh yeah Anj is my brother man he's a straight killer and I think he's just gonna have too much juice for John Howard Anj doesn't go away he stays in your face and he hits you hard and bell to bell and uh I just think he's got too much uh determination to win that fight and I think his willpower is going to overcome John Howard's John Howard's tough he's a veteran but I think after five minutes in there with Ange 
he's just going to lose the, the taste for the fight because Ons just keeps coming and keeps hitting you hard and uh, until he breaks you. Yeah, I was surprised that the, that the UFC didn't bring Ons um, after his fight, just find both him and Jack Taylor because that fight was, yeah. was ridiculous. I know, I know. He's one of them. If they would have got him straight back on the Contender Series, he would have murked someone in a few months after that. But maybe they just want to see him get one more outside and then come back. Exactly. So this is a good fight for him. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Awesome, Tuco. I'm I'm fucking stoked for you, bro. I'm stoked for Let you. Let me show you the belt real quick. Yeah, yeah. I've Let already got it up here. Let... Damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, already got it there. That's a, that's that's fucking awesome, man. I'm so, I'm so stoked for you. Congratulations. Um, if you want to plug your social media, plugging your sponsors. Thank anybody. Floor is yours. Thank you. It's just Tuco 300 on Instagram. And I'm going to start a Twitter. I promise you, Alex, I'm going to start a Twitter this week. Or maybe when I'm in Vegas in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll, I'll have the time to do it. But yeah, that's it. Awesome.